Looking at today's video, we'll be editing this said image I shot from one of my light and color episodes. I think the episode one chasing a natural light, um, differentiating between overcast and sunlight or direct sunlight shooting conditions. So if you haven't watched that, I would advise make it a point to go watch that video before you come and watch this particular video because I think this is more like a continuation from that said video where I will be editing these images here in capture one so this is an image i got during the overcast condition or cloudy condition and this is the sunny image and also these two are also sunny images all right so what do i do to images like this what i would want to do is to just check my histogram for one and also see how the you know the information is playing around so if you take a look at this image the image is blown out to my preference so i'm just going to you know reduce the exposure a little bit and uh, i have that fixed mm, what i will do next is to add a bit of contrast to this reduce the brightness and in my dynamic range i'll open up the shadows reduce the highlights because i need you know details back in some of the highlights and capture one has got to be one of the you know the best um, post processing softwares to have a very good engine for their high dynamic range i can you know retrieve as much as information from my highlights and you know the same for my shadows but that's not what we are looking out for so i'm just going to undo that and i'm coming to my levels and pushing some white into my levels just to bring back you know that contrast you're not looking at you know making this image look um as though we would have edited it in lightroom you're making it look like we are actually editing it here in capture one and if you've been with me on my instagram story and also maybe yeah mostly my instagram story because i did mention that last year i concentrated a lot on lightroom and this year i'll be doing that for capture one also so this year i'm fully going to put out capture one videos and once in a while i'm just going to you know put in lightroom videos just for shaggy reasons all right so i'm just going to you know reduce this and reduce the luminance of the shadows also and a little bit of the highlights all right and there we have that i will come into my saturation i mean my exposure tab and reduce the saturation just a tad bit then we can work with an even toned image all right so open up the shadows a little bit reduce the white of course and this is where we started from before and after before and after you know we're working our way towards the end goal so in the color editor i'm going to come into skin tones pick up the skin tones and reduce the range a little bit and you know increase the saturation because i want the skin tones to look as rich as possible just know that whenever you increase the skin tones or whenever you increase the amount concerning the range of color is selected if the surrounding also has that range of color you're going to see that effect in there you don't have this in lightroom that's the advantage of having capture one so kudos to capture one users now i'm back to the color edits i'm going to run into the basic and when you see this you know it shows me back to or it sends me back to lightroom when i'm trying to use the hsl tab you know to color my images so first off i usually don't like to see blues i don't have any blue in this environment so i'll pick up this too and make sure and see what's in here so i think in the blacks i'm seeing a lot of you know this purple i'm going to reduce the magenta also just to be safe reduce the cyan reduce the greens although we don't have any of these colors in there i automatically try and remove them just to be safe now in my yellows if i remove the yellows this is what we are looking at so you can also see that the skin also has a bit of yellows in them right so you don't take them out completely and i'll change the hue towards the orange right just to keep it you know working perfectly right let's see that of the no we won't send the hues towards the yellows uh, it feels weird so i'm just going to you know send it towards the reds a little bit minus 1.5 is fine reducing the saturation as always this should be fine then with the hues of the reds i'll send it towards the orange you know to harmonize the color oh so we'll reduce the saturation of that and we'll just boost the lightness of that 
why are we seeing the red shots oh okay they can see the reds in there too all right let me just boost and maybe boost the saturation also just to be on the safe side so this is what we are looking at as the before and this is the after the before and after so usually with light skin models right i look at adding some cyan and some blues and some warmth to the image just to make it pop out more so what i would do here in capture one you realize that you can create adjustment layer so i'm going to create a new field adjustment layer rename this to color grading and in color grading i like to work with the color balance too as you can see over here so here in the color balance tool, we have what we call the shadow slider or the shadow wheel, the mid-tone wheel or the highlight tool. You can also individually go through, you know, these um, um, label tabs over here. But I like to work with the three-way just so that I can see, you know, the values or, or I can see each and every, you know, slider or wheel I have moved. You can also create or create. Yeah, you can also create new tabs. So create a floating tool, and all I have to do is look for is a color balance tool. Then I'll change. So if I have shadows here, I change this to mid tone and put it right underneath it. Create another one. Create a floating tool, then another color color balance tool, and change this to highlight and put it right underneath that. So I can have three working tools here this way, or I can choose to drag them and push them here you know just to feel like uh, a very big creative right so i have this looking like this so you can move this around any way you want all right now in the shadows like i said i would like to add some you know some blues to it so this is me adding some blues to my shadows and just take a look at how it changes the image already it, it takes away you know um how many times have I said, you know, <laughs> it takes away some of the yellows from the shadowy parts in the image for me. And this is what I actually am looking for. Can you see that? Then, like I said, when it comes to light skin subjects, you look at adding cyan or turquoise or whatever this color is into your highlights. And boom, you have that light skin looking like a light skin. Then... In our mid tones, I'm just going to warm it up, right? Just to be on the safe side. And this is what we have for our color grading. So this is the before and the after. Before and after. One thing I also like about Capture One is you can go overboard and then you come and play with your opacity slider. So if I should say go overboard with this, I can come into my opacity slider and then reduce the opacity and have the color grading folder or the color grading layer fill the image with the amount i wanted to fill the image in so i'm just going to leave it 100 because i love it 100 but what do you guys think i think uh, 85 yeah 85 should work best so this is the before and after before and after right so this is how best you can create a floating tool i'm going to you know close remove this to remove this send it back to the way and move it back right underneath my color editor so if i hold option on the key option or alt on the keyboard there's a before and after before and after also you can create another field layer name this color grading 2 um, however you want to name it and also add another grade to this so with this i'm going to add a bit of reds or yellows into my shadows not too much then i'll reduce the luminance right then i'll reduce the opacity i'll do the same for the highlights this time the highlights i'm going to code it up a little bit hmm, more into the cyan region then i have my image looking like this and in the mid tones let's add a, a hint of red let's see before and after before and after can i reduce yeah, I'm going to reduce the luminance of our mid-tones also and not have it affecting too much of our image. So this is the before and after the second color grade and this is the before and after for the first color grade. And this is the before and after for the overall image. 
and this is what we are left with beautiful isn't it now i'll come back to my background i don't like to see some sharpness in my image so i'm just going to take out the sharpness then i am good to go so this is the edit for the overcast image i hope you like it i like it because i sent it from this to that in capture one basic adjustment but it speaks a lot on your image if you're trying to you know make your image tell a particular story with color so i'm going to copy the set adjustment over here and try it try and paste it on the you know the sunny lit image and this is after we've copied this onto this so the same adjustment but on this one just take a look at how the sun brings depth to the image how the sun even makes the color gradient we did here even send it to another level let me try and see sorry let me try and increase wow just wow right so i'm just going to keep it like this let's see before and after before and after so uh, before and after right. you know what i'm just going to delete these ones right then work separately when it comes to coloring sunny images all right so let's see if you're not blowing out our exposure right and i'll create a new field layer color grade then i come here into the shadows of course i'm going to take away some of my red so this should work for me then this usually works right. then i'll move this up a little bit so let's see before and after can you see how we have moved our image from looking like this to this with just these sliders being moved around all right so in the color editor what i will do is make sure my yellows are looking this way I'm looking a little bit reddish all right then what i will do is come into my curve and try and add some slight contrast curve in here what i think this does is it adds contrast to the color grade you've done in as much as it's affecting the image it also adds its own contrast i reduce saturation just a tad bit in here then boom this is what we are working with this is the before and after before and after this is how this image looks so i'm going to copy this grade right and put it onto this one eh, there we have it right it works also for this one too and what do you think i'm going to reduce the exposure for this too and let's reduce the brightness instead all right i think the brightness works and the exposure just because we have a skin blowing out let's see exposure warning before and after before and after all right this works i'm only going to you know open up my shadows a little bit i feel like the blacks are too much when i say the blacks are too much and i'm here reducing the blacks the irony all right let's see highlights reduce the highlights yeah We'll copy this and put it on this and that's beautiful i'm going to add another color grade to this right just to make it pop out the more so color balance move here push this yeah. and you see adding just a hint of blue into the shadows always does the trick so this is the before and after 
before and after. I'm going to do the same, adding some blues into the highlights, and we'll do the same for the metals. Okay, I don't think we have to do the same for the metals. I'll add some teal instead into the metals, and I'll reduce. I'm reducing that won't help. Let's see, adding reds. Or is yellow instead? Okay, okay. Yeah, adding teal also works here too. Alright, so we have this color grade 2. Color grade 2. Turn it on. Let me copy this adjustment and paste it here. I think we doubled the adjustment over here. Right, so the color grade 2 is also working for this. Um, let's see if it will work for this. Let me turn off one of the color grades. Yeah, the color grade 2 is also working for this, but I think it's too much. So I'm going to reduce the opacity on it. So if I should put up the images on the full screen mode, this is the dial looking image we had from the overcast it works really well when you're shooting portraits when you're shooting group of people outdoors overcast should be your best friend i used to love overcast when i was you know starting up in photography but as time went on of course you probably need the directional sunlight so you probably need the uh, uh, um, sunny condition shooting experience to see the difference between you know shooting during the overcast condition and shooting during the sunny condition i feel like there's a lot more depth and definition to the images with the sun popping out compared to the one with without the sun popping out oh i didn't even notice there's a dive right up here when i was shooting wow what are the chances all right thank you so much for watching today's video i hope you enjoyed it and if you did kindly you leave me a thumbs up if you have any questions at all leave them down in the comment section box below i would get right to it make sure you share my videos help other people also discover my channel let them come and learn a thing or two when it comes to shooting editing and also figuring out what gears they need to buy for their home studio and all that thank you so much and i'll see you in my next video peace